floppies? Sure. Yes, you can use floppies. Getting legacy hardware to work is possible. Floppies. <laughs> Who even does that these days? Last time I gave you one reason to say, what a maroon. Today I'm going to give you one or two more. As I said in my last video, this is a learning project, and I expressed my expectation that my curiosity would continue to serve me well. Sometimes it is not so much your specific destination that matters as what you see and experience and learn along the way. So what's the other reason to say, what a maroon? Well, it's like this. The longest journey begins with a single step. And you always start at the beginning. My FX4100 was built, you know, the, the system was built eight years ago on a board that still offered support for floppies and for, for parallel ATA devices. So I built the system, I put it into service, and at some point, I don't remember if it was initially or just slightly after that, I put these two floppy drives in it. Never actually used them. Had I tried, I would have discovered this issue a long time ago. So, you can use floppies in Ubuntu 1804. I've not tried anything later. You can use floppies with Ubuntu 18.04 and with the Linux kernel version at least through 5.3. Now before I continue, let me offer this disclaimer. You should never type any command into your terminal until you know what it does and understand what you're doing. I'm going to be mentioning several command line interface tools, and it's totally on you to learn about them. Now with this screen, you can see two different CLI commands to learn about your kernel. The first is presented with three different options. It really doesn't matter for our purpose which of these commands you use, but in my case, the kernel is 5.3.0. Now if you do some research on that particular kernel version, you'll realize it needs to be updated. It was only supported through December of last year. But before I deal with that, I want to continue my story. Now I was trying to get Ubuntu to recognize my floppies so that I could use them. Now in my case I'm using Dolphin as my file manager. You may have Nautilus or Nemo. But my file manager couldn't find my floppies. Gparted also couldn't find them. So I did some research. And I learned the lsmod command, lsmod, would reveal if the floppy module was loaded into the kernel. If not, then mod probe, another command line tool, could be used to load the floppy module into a running system. And I learned there are two different configuration files that can be edited in order to have the floppy module load on boot. Now for me, none of that produced the results I was seeking. So listen for it. I assumed, yes, I assumed. What a maroon. I assumed the problem that w was that the module had been dropped by Canonical after being deprecated by Torvalds and company last summer. So that is why I was going to try some distros geared for legacy hardware. I figured if they're still supporting 386 hardware, then maybe the floppy module will be there too. So that's what I did. I tried about seven different distros. Let me share this first. If you find a DVD or CD with a 10-year-old distro on it, it'll load for you. But you try to go online and you'll not succeed because encryption protocols have changed since then. I tried old Mint, old Manjaro, old OpenSUSE, all of which are familiar to me in their present incarnations, 
But if you want a distro for legacy hardware, then in my opinion, your first and best option will be go to go to DistroWatch and do a search for them. There are a number of distros geared for legacy hardware. So, finding some suggestions for, quote, the best distro for legacy hardware. You know, opinions are like noses. Almost everyone has one. Well, I went to DistroWatch. I learned more about each of these options, and I settled on four to try. Those four were Puppy. Okay, which pup? And Slytaz. And DSL. And Anti-X. None of them worked to get my floppies recognized. At least not out of the box. Sure, these distros loaded fine. I could get online. I could learn more about each of these and the error messages I was getting. I see potential for each of these distros. But my problem was not because of the floppy module being deprecated, nor because it was no longer available, nor because I needed a legacy-focused distro. Remember I said it's best to begin at the beginning? I had a couple of different responses in my research pointing me back to my BIOS setup. What did I fail to do initially? I failed to set up my BIOS for floppies. What a maroon. A noob error if ever there was one. As I said, it was eight years ago, and I must have been rushed to get it working and did not really care about the floppy use at the time, just that they were available, and I never tried them. But on my board, the ASRock 970 DE3, there are three different settings in three different locations. One of the settings tells the BIOS what kind of floppy you have in your system. One of the settings tells the BIOS whether it should allow the floppy to be used as a boot device. And the third? Aha! Uh -huh. Have you heard the one about the dining room customer who called the waiter over and says, taste my soup? The waiter, waiter replies, what's wrong? Just taste it, the customer says. I I'll return it to the kitchen. The customer says, just Taste it. Waiter looks and says, where's your spoon? Aha! Uh -huh. The third setting enables the floppy disk controller. Once I had all those options properly set and rebooted, now I have access to my floppy. In a modern LTS Ubuntu 18.04, with a Linux kernel 5, all I needed to do was find the spoon. So, next to update my kernel to an LTS kernel, and since UKU, UKUU, the Ubuntu kernel update utility, is now subscription, I get to decide. Do I want to support this developer with his nominal subscription fee, or do I want to do it the hard way? I'm inclined to do the latter, not because I'm cheap and think all things should be free, as in free beer, but because I think I'll continue to learn that way. And I am curious. I think curiosity serves us well. Now, if you stayed with me through the video, thank you. I hope you found it at least entertaining and maybe educational. See you next time as I continue to bring you videos on things you can do with tech. Stay curious, my friends. Stay curious.